the first part of collaboration is engagement. How do we engage teachers and the administration in order to achieve results for these students? But at the same time, how do we then engage the community to be a part of this work? So that means that everyone has to come to the table, everyone has to be accountable, and everyone has to be on the same page in order to achieve results for these students. What is a priority school? That is our term for low-performing schools, but we don't like that term because we think it's very negative. And it's negative for the teachers, it's negative for the students and the community. So in order for us to change that lexicon, we think that these schools are a priority. So we do call them priority schools. We know that in many of these schools, the majority of the students are ethnic minority students, uh, poor students, ELL students, and we want to make sure that all of the students are having an equal opportunity to do this work and be a productive citizen in our society. This is not going to be at cost to the school district. This is coming at a service by way of the United Teachers of Richmond, the California Teachers Association, and the NEA. And so this is our way of collaborating and building support and showing that we too have a very definite role in school transformation. We have found out through research that there are four elements that really make a difference when you turn a school around. Leadership at the district level, leadership at the building level, and yes, leadership at the union level all coming together to collaborate and build a capacity for the students to be successful. Then the next thing we look at is professional capacity. It is about how do we improve the effectiveness and the capacity of the staffs at this school. We cannot do this alone, so the third element is really looking at the community and looking at building strong family community partnerships. And then that brings me to the last element, and that is leveraging community assets. This is where we really look at how do we leverage the community and what they bring to the table. And I know that we look at scores and we look at the data that you mentioned, but because we know often there are campaigns, they come and they go, what is the life of the campaign and are there some metrics or measurements right up front where we're saying, when we reach this point, we will know that we've reached the pinnacle of success in our campaign. And then putting the spotlight back on us, what do you need from us as a district to make sure that we do our part to link up with this national campaign to make it successful? This is a six year campaign. We understand that change does not take place quickly, at least three to five years before you see any kind of change uh, in education and reform. And so we want to give the teachers, the parents, the children, the community enough time where we can make sure that those changes are real and that they are sustainable. This was the piece that was missing, and now you've done it. So let me just tell you, I am absolutely with you on this. I think this is where reform starts. It doesn't start in some private corporate office, yes. but some foundation does not start there. It starts here, coming from our teachers who want to make our, our, our classrooms stronger, who want to find better ways, the best ways to reach our students, who don't want to close their schools, who don't want to disassemble what has been built up, but want to make it stronger. Thank you so much, Ms. Simmons. Thank you. We yeah, really have, appreciate your being and here. And we welcome and thank you again. Everybody give her a big oh, round of applause coming out of here. Thank you for coming.